Now that the RTX 3000 GPUs from Nvidia have been announced, the onus is on AMD to respond by competing across the stack, as promised by CEO Lisa Su, which presumably includes the high end. Many pundits out there have said that Big Navi will indeed dethrone Nvidia, while others have gradually come around to what I've been saying for months now, that Big Navi is really not going to be that big. More recently, about two months ago, I published an article on Cortex.tech titled Big Navi Not So Big, where I revealed that Big Navi would perform about on par with a 2080 Ti with up to 15% on top of that in AMD optimized games. Compared to the hype fast from pretty much everyone else a few months ago, it seems more and more people are starting to come closer to the numbers that I shared. But even my skeptical self has to admit that if Lisa Su promised to be competitive at the high end, could AMD be debating all the leakers out there and have something truly powerful in reserve? Or are we indeed going to be disappointed yet again with a mid-range GPU dressed up as a high-end one? And who should you trust when it comes to all the information that's going around? Well, as it turns out, the recently leaked RDNA2 engineering sample might have the answers we are looking for. If you are looking to put together a new PC, you will probably need a Windows 10 Pro key and GameFun365.com is currently selling them for less than $15. I've tested the service myself and their keys work perfectly. You can also get Office 2019 keys and the keys work globally. Use the coupon code C20 for an additional 20% off. Link in the description. Before we look at the leaked engineering board, I want to briefly explain why there are so many conflicting rumors out there from various media outlets and YouTube pundits. Now, I'm not attacking anyone here personally, I should really stress that, and this is not meant to discredit anyone, but rather to help you understand why there's so much information that doesn't quite match up, even though it's coming from reputable sources. A really good example of this comes from German reviewer and YouTuber. Igor from Igor's Lab. In a video a few days ago on his YouTube channel, he claimed that sources have told him that Big Navi will perform between the RTX 3070 and the 3080, and he goes on to speculate that if AMD pushes the GPU to 300 watts, it could in fact match the 3080 in performance. He also says in that video that AMD has not yet issued any parts list to their board partners, and that therefore there won't be RDNA 2 AIB GPUs available this year. So is he telling the truth? So firstly, this info partially matches what I've been saying for months now, that Big Navi is going to be around 15% faster than a 2080 Ti, which would indeed put it between the 3070 and the 3080. Igor seems to be one of the few sources out there that seems to have a more moderate outlook on Big Navi, as we've seen several other outlets talking about AMD having an Nvidia killer this time around. While I think AMD has the potential to take over the graphics market for gamers in the coming years because of the consoles and of how games will be optimized for RDNA 2 by default, I think we are still in the raw specs race right now, and I feel it's too early to expect AMD to reap the benefits of their APU strategy and their ties with Sony and Microsoft. Secondly, the timing of Igor coming out with this information is not an accident. The reason why I started sharing similar information to Igor's much earlier is because my information is coming from much higher up the chain. I'm not saying this to flex or to make myself seem important. I'm just trying to explain to you how the leak scene works. You see, AMD and Nvidia have several tiers of partners. For instance, EVGA and Zotac are Nvidia Tier 1 AIBs because they make GPUs exclusively based on Nvidia's designs. Sapphire, on the other hand, is a good example of a Tier 1 AMD AIB. So what are Tier 2 partners then? Tier 2s are companies like MSI or Gigabyte because they make GPUs for both AMD and Nvidia rather than exclusively to one or the other. And this is the same in infrastructure and other business areas with these companies. Because of this, Tier 2 partners only get the final details much later than Tier 1. And the same is true for the A6 themselves, so that's the GPU chip and the memory. The reason Igor says AIBs haven't received a part 
watts list yet, and that if AMD pushes Big Navi to 300 watts, it can possibly match the 3080, is because this is what a tier 2 AIB has told him. Let's use Gigabyte as an example. AMD will tell Gigabyte that they expect 2080 Ti plus 15% performance out of Big Navi, and that they will be getting the parts list by October. So one possibility is that Gigabyte, in this example, knowing that AMD always screws up their coolers, assumes that AIB models can probably be pushed to perform better. And having good knowledge of how well the 3080 actually performs, Gigabyte are hoping they will be able to get Big Navi closer to the 3080. So you see, whatever AMD tells this tier 2 partner is what a leaker connected to them will make public. But tier 1 partners have not only more information, but they are already getting the A6 sent to them. This is why Igor shared the information he did and only now. So it's not that Igor is making stuff up, and in fact he is not lying about the information he has. And it's not that other YouTubers out there are making stuff up, at least the reputable ones. You have to understand that people in the media who share leaks have access to different tiers of people inside these companies or app partners. In fact, even the engineers inside of these companies will have access to different levels of information. Very few people actually know what the final performance or functioning of a processor will be. Now I'm using Igor here as an example, but this isn't anything personal against him. Remember, depending on the tier of partner or engineer they are talking to, media might be sharing outdated information or only partial information. So hopefully this might help you understand why there's so much diverging information out there regarding Big Navi and why I've been confident in what I've shared here on the channel on Twitter at Cortex and on Cortex.tech. So moving on to this engineering sample that popped up on the Chinese forums, is this really Navi 21 or is this Navi 22 as WCCF Tech for instance have been suggesting? So looking at the leaked engineering sample we see 8 memory slots, although without seeing the top side of the PCB it's impossible to say how many of them are populated and by what. The most probable scenario is that each has a 2 gigabyte module from the new Samsung 16 gigabit per second GDDR6 memory for a total of 16 gigabytes. So that makes this a 256 bit bus GPU. Now you might think that if that's the case then surely this can't be Navi 21 as how could a 256 bit bus GPU possibly compete at the high end as AMD promised. But if you look at the power delivery here on the left we see 10 stages of what looks like 70 amp smart power stations, the same as on the 5700 XT, except that on that one there were 8 instead of 10 here on this sample. We also see a bunch of stuff here that won't be on the final GPU like these configuration switches and these readout pins. There's also an 8 pin connector to the far left here, some indicator LEDs and then 2 pins are visible for what could be another 6 or 8 pin connector. Judging by the cable attached to it, it's probably an 8 pin connector. Now while it's true that engineering boards are usually over engineered for testing purposes, recently as we saw with the 5700 XT, the power stages haven't changed at all from engineering samples to the final product. In fact it's typical of AMD to over engineer their reference designs. So the final boards themselves are typically over engineered, not just the samples. Speaking of typical, there's a sticker saying typical Samsung 16 gigabytes, which matches with what the memory layout looks like, and there's another one which seems to read full 86 core typical XT A0 A6. This 86 core portion is hard to read, it could be 80 cores which would make more sense, or maybe it says something completely different, it's too blurry to be certain. Regardless, what we are looking at here is indeed an early engineering sample of Navi 21. The power stages here suggest around 220 to 250 watts, but it could easily support 275 watts. Again, AMD usually over-engineers these reference boards, that's important to remember. So this power configuration correlates with what the tier 2 AIB told Igor about the GPU being able to be pushed to something like 300 watts. Now you might say, 
but just because it has all this power in this engineering board, that doesn't mean it's Navi 21. This has to be Navi 22. If we look at the product IDs that Rogue Game discovered a while back, we see three different Navi SKUs plus a Pro Navi 21. So the GLXL card probably isn't a gaming GPU. The XTX is the same nomenclature that AMD used for the anniversary edition of the 5700 XT. XT is the same that AMD used for the 5700 XT, and XL is the same that AMD used for the 5700. Navi 22 is not coming anytime soon. It's going to come out around the end of Q1 or early Q2 next year. So the GPUs being announced next month are these three. A 6700, so that would be the XL, a 6700 XT, so that's the XT variant, and we will get to what the XTX is in a second. So this is basically an evolution of the 5700 XT, but this time on 7 nanometer plus, so that's using EUV. I'm not saying that this is just the 5700 XT on a new node. RDNA 2 is going to be the first true new microarchitecture that fully departs from GCN, but the core of the GPU will be a shrunk down 5700 XT. Another thing that's important to remember is that even though AMD has claimed 50% better performance per watt in RDNA 2 compared to 1, most of those efficiency claims will probably be diluted into clock speeds being pushed as far as possible. If we look at every gaming GPU that has come out in the last 20 years or so from AMD and Nvidia, there have been three major drivers for performance increases. Transistor density, die size, and most importantly, clock speed. You can see here how around 2016, when Vega finally came out, it wasn't too far off of Nvidia's Pascal GPUs, and they were both ginormous. Nvidia has continued that trend with Turing, and now with Ampere at 628mm squared, which compounds with more density in Samsung's 8N node. So there's no denying that the process node and the size of the die are a great contributor to performance increases, especially on Nvidia's side. But both of these are shadowed by clock speeds, the greatest contributor to performance increases over the years, in GPU land that is. So you can correlate this with the massive increase in performance from the 28 nanometer GPUs to 16 nanometer GPUs, and how the performance gains have been much lower in recent years, with frequencies not changing as much. For this reason, I had spec in the past that this generation AMD would be focusing on clock speeds rather than compute units, but it seems I underestimated the power bill that came with 7 nanometer. If we look at the watts per millimeter squared on each node, the not scaling seems to have completely gone out of the picture at 7 nanometer, at an absurdly high wattage being used per millimeter squared. Architectural advancements are playing a more prominent role here, like dynamic voltage frequency scale and clock gating, but it's undeniable that it's unrealistic to expect GPUs to have a ton of compute units, really high clocks, and at the same time be very power efficient. Something's got to give. So going back to this engineering sample, even though RDNA 2 is more power efficient than RDNA 1, I would expect that extra power headroom to be used to push clocks. But if Big Navi has indeed 80 compute units, that means it will have to clock lower than the consoles if the power delivery is not adjusted. For instance, the Series X has 52 compute units at 1.825 GHz. The PS5 has higher clocks, 2.23 GHz, but that's with a reduced core count at only 36 compute units. The more compute units you add, the lower your clock speeds will be. Unless, again, if you throw efficiency out of the window. Hence, this massive power delivery for a 256-bit bus GPU. I wouldn't be surprised if Navi 21 was clocking around 1700 MHz with 80 compute units, but drawing 270 75 watts or even 300 watts, which again would explain all of these power stages. This engineering sample seems to corroborate all of this information, but there's also the possibility that AMD will actually reduce the core count, for instance to 64 compute units, in 
order to push the clocks even higher to something like 2.4 GHz at 300 watts. And this brings us back to that XTX variant. I've heard that there have been a lot of meetings recently at AMD HQ to adjust to the Ampere launch, and that there's the possibility of this XTX card actually being rebranded as a high-end GPU on its own. If you recall last year in the RDNA 1 launch, the anniversary edition was actually branded as the RX 690. So the original plan for the 5700 series was to have a 90 class GPU that would compete with the 2080 Ti. AMD never managed to push clocks as high as they wanted, so they rebranded it as an anniversary edition last minute. This time around, the same sort of process seems to be happening at AMD. There is indeed the possibility that the special edition 6000 will end up being pushed to try and match the RTX 3080. From what I've heard though, even at 300 watts, it seems this specially bin GPU doesn't beat the 3080, but it does perform better than the regular big Navi that, as I've been saying for months now, will be 2080 Ti level of performance plus 15%. So to make things very clear on what I'm speculating and what is information I have been given from tier one partners, I'm going to label them very clearly in a chart. Navi 21 is indeed a 256 bit bus GPU with 16 gigabytes of G6 memory, and it performs at 2080 Ti levels plus 15%, as I've said before. Now, my guess is that this will be called the 6700 XT and will be priced close to the 3070, maybe $450. There are three graphics cards at launch. This full Navi 21, a cut down version, and there's a third one that everyone assumes is just a bin version of Navi 21, similar to the anniversary edition from last year as we discussed. So the cut down version is the 6700 and it will compete with the 3060 Ti. The full Navi 21, so big Navi, is the 6700 XT, which will compete with the 3070 as mentioned above. But the one that the tier one partners believe is just an anniversary edition, I think, remember this part is my speculation, will be pushed to its limits and be branded as the 6800 or 6800 XT instead of Lisa Sue edition like last year, and will have higher clocks to try and get close to the 3080 in terms of performance. It will probably cost a similar amount, maybe undercutting Nvidia a bit, perhaps at $600, but again, offering more VRAM. And these three cards should be out by mid-November. Now, even though this bit of information came from a tier one partner, I need confirmation from another tier one to firmly put it in the tier one information. So I'll add a speculation flavor here. Navi 22 is a competitor to the 3060. It's a 192-bit bus card with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and will come out around Q1 or early Q2 next year. So I'll file this one under speculation still, but informed speculation. Now, before we go on to some more exciting possibilities on the GPU front from AMD, YouTube seems to be automatically unsubscribing people because of the amount of dislikes that my videos are getting from fanboys. So if you like my videos and would like to help my channel, give this video a like and make sure you're subscribed. So back to Radeon, it seems that AMD's strategy this time around is to get the GPUs close enough in performance to Nvidia's, bring them to market in a timely fashion, and offer more VRAM as a value proposition. For a lot of uninformed consumers out there, seeing bigger VRAM numbers on a GPU box might sway them into thinking the GPU is automatically better. So it's an interesting approach from AMD from a marketing standpoint, even if it doesn't materialize in actual performance. As I talked about a few months ago, there have been big changes made to the SDMA on RDNA 2. With the little information available at the time, I initially thought this was perhaps because there would be memory stacked on top of the GPU. But it seems that changes to the SDMA are related to GPU to GPU data transfer on servers and to a new caching system that should mitigate the narrowed bus to some extent. So a 256 bit bus GPU won't necessarily starve the cores as much as you'd expect. But even with this new caching system, if Navi 22 is 192 bit and Navi 21 is 256 bit, and if even at 300 watts Navi 21 
one won't beat the 3080, then where is this high-end GPU that AMD promised? Lisa Su clearly said they would be competitive across the stack, right? AMD has a 3090 out there, and there will be eventually a 3080 Ti or something like that. So how will AMD compete with those? <laughs> well, there's only one logical option left that I can see for AMD to compete at that level. Just like AMD took a data center GPU and sold it in low volume as a gaming GPU, so that's the Radeon 7, I think there's a small chance, and let me stress that, a very small chance that we might see something similar this generation, except this time using the HBM version of Sienna that is meant to come out as one of the professional cards, like the ones they've been making for Apple, and stick a different cooler on it and call it a gaming GPU. Using 16 gigs of HBM 2E or more, AMD could get Navi 21 to indeed surpass the 3080 by a small margin, around 5 to 10 percent or so, with the fast HBM memory to compete with the G6X on the 3090, AMD would have an argument here with a truly enthusiast-grade GPU, something that would get people excited and that could possibly even beat out the 3090 in some titles, who knows. Also of note, in my article a couple of months ago on Cortex.tech, I also said that AMD would be announcing their new products around the 7th of October, and AMD have indeed already set the 8th of October for a new announcement, but have now set up a separate event just for RDNA 2 on the 28th. If all they have to show is a 256-bit GPU that competes with the 3070 at a reasonable power draw, why have a separate event? To talk about new software features? About the ray tracing capabilities? Maybe, but would that be enough to keep consumers interested and warrant its own event? So back to the speculation chart. The only way I see AMD competing with the 3080 Ti and 3090 would be with an HPM version of Navi 21, so a 6900 XT. Sadly, every tier 1 source without exception that I've spoken to has repeatedly and confidently told me that there is no HPM version coming to gaming. But then again, they said the same thing when I suggested the possibility of a 7 nanometer Vega back in 2018, and AMD ended up releasing the Radeon 7, contrary to everyone's expectations at the time. I still believe that all we will see is 2080 Ti plus 15% performance. As fun as it is to speculate, I think it's best to lower our expectations to realistic levels. But maybe, just maybe, there's another Radeon 7-like GPU based on Navi 21 that AMD has been keeping secret from everyone. Here's hoping. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons. Please consider joining them and help support independent analysis if you enjoy my content. By becoming a patron, you will also get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server as well as exclusive content. Thanks for watching and until the next one.